Sports, it's in the game on the Sports Podcasting Network. Good day, good night, and welcome to Sports, it's in the game, the reboot 2.0. We're back. We're back to talk about sports video game. This world is becoming a weird place, but you know what's not weird? Our consoles, our PCs, our mobile, our Mac. Wherever game we play, wherever platform, it's not dull, it's still fun, it is always be fun, and we're back, I'm Kevin, Kevin Larmay, host of Sports, it's in the game, and hopefully you're happy to be back today, we'll obviously talk later on uh, about one of my favorite games of all time, a classic, a masterpiece, one of the best sports video game ever made. If not the best boxing game ever made, okay? Some say Mike Tyson's Punch-Out is one of boxing's best video game. I say no. I say you're wrong. I say it's Fight Night Champion 2011 by EA Sports. We'll get to it, but first, uh, what's been up since the last four years? Of course, let's talk about video games over the last four years. Uh, I'm, of course, a... A famous video game player, of course, it's sports video game. I don't think there's a game I haven't tried in the sports world, and I'm really happy with the Olympic Games, Tokyo 2020. At least they might not happen in real life because of COVID-19, but they might happen on my PS4. So that's that's one thing. We'll see if I can get my hands on that Japanese video game. If you're listening to the show and you have it. You know where to send it to me. I'll be playing a lot of my video game. Of course, I have a PlayStation 4. I have an Xbox 360. PlayStation 2 before that. PlayStation 1. Sega Genesis. Nintendo before that was my original first own one when I was a youngster back in the mid-80s. But before that, I did play also with my neighbor's Atari. So that was my introduction to video game if you want a, a quick cliff's note to my history of video game, NHL 94, one of my favorite video game ever, Masters PGA, Tiger Woods 12, one of my favorite video game ever too, and it will be the review of the next show here on sports, it's in the game, the Masters have been postponed, we don't know when yet, and uh, every year I take out my Xbox 360 to play the two games, and we're going to talk about the next two Weeks because, yeah, we're going to talk about great things. We're going to talk about different video games. But over the last few years, video games that really got me going on the PlayStation side. We're talking about sports wise, FIFA, NHL on a yearly basis are for sure, for me, games that I cannot get away from. Uh, I think every year, except NHL 20 this year for financial circumstances. By the way, EA Sports, if you're listening, Send me some codes my way. I need to play NHL 20. But so and these are the games that are, are really caught my attention. Over the last, let's just go quickly over the last four years. Project Cars have made me discover a bit of the indie side of racing game. It's not that indie anymore, I understand. I will be talking about Project Cars, Project Cars 2 in the future. I do have a steering wheel and I do have more time now to play with them with sports being canceled for the next foreseeable future. So we do have a great lineup of shows coming up. So today we're going to review Fight Night Champions later on. Next show, Tiger Woods 12 Masters Edition. One of the only Masters official video game at Augusta National. One of the only video game golf wise that I think is worthy of it you, you actually feel like you're playing the masters it's another masterpiece and you're playing these games in 2020 and they're still good it's still playing well so that for sure is the next two shows we're going to talk later on once again about Fight Night Champion outside of FIFA and NHL Project Cars like I was mentioning this made me discover a real true career mode the death of it and that's really fun will be one review I did like Club uh, another PS4 game. But what made me go transition from Xbox 360 to a PS4 back in 2015? Like before the show, but I, I never really talked about it. And it's a reboot, so we can talk about it. I had an Xbox 360. I went through two. 
So the Xbox 360 that I still have and that's still working really good, you actually might hear that little hum in the background. That's the Xbox 360 hum, if you know what I mean. I really hope that I don't get the R-R-O-D while I'm talking to you. That's the famous Red Ring of Death. Never had a PS3. It's the only reason, for some reason, I, I kind of revered Xbox and came back to PlayStation. It's fine. I discovered a whole new thing, and it's great. But Xbox 360 is still very good condition. It's an old version of it. I think I bought it in like 2010, so I was still good for the late aspect of it. But around 2014, 2015, I had more means and I was looking at upgrading my television and mostly my, my PlayStation because I wanted to play UFC EA Sports. And it's kind of like a good segue to what we're going to talk about later today because the UFC EA Sports, which I think we reviewed once in the history of the show, we might review the entire series, one, two, three, in the next few months if we're bored because I think it's a worthwhile series. There's, Of course, it's not pretty, it's not perfect also. But it is worthwhile, good combat game, and it is tied to find that champion you wanted or not, because it's the same team back uh, in the tw- early 2010. Finite Champion was the last boxing game, last unlicensed uh, game also that EA Sports did do. We'll talk about it later on. We'll talk about the history of EA Sports Finite Champion. But UFC, the first UFC I wanted to play. I'm a big UFC fan, especially from 20, 2009, I would say. All the way to 2018, I'm trying to keep up, trying to love UFC, but I've been covering soccer. If you don't know, I'm a soccer journalist. I've been covering soccer pretty hardcore for the last few years. There are only so many times in a day, and UFC's been having like multiple cars every day almost, so it's been hard to follow over the years. But being a big fan of UFC and and wanting to experience a a proper UFC game, I actually have still, if I can find it, old school in my uh, box here, an old uh, UFC PlayStation 2 game, I think, Sudden Death, something like that, that's an old school UFC game, it's like a Japanese version, but in English, but it's a type of game that it's not easy to find, I ordered it off Amazon in like 2008, and I remember being all surprised when it came in like three days of shipping, Uh, but that's back in my uh, 2008 days when I used to live in Oakville. But back in that day, uh, that's one of the games that I'm not even sure if it's still in my catalog somewhere. I don't even, do I still have my PlayStation 2? I think I do somewhere, but I think I still have that game, yep. But Sudden Death was a good, good kickboxing type of game. Kind of like a wrestling game more than a fighting game. I did like the game, though. I did like some career aspect. I did like the gym aspect of that UFC Sudden Death game, and I kind of wish this was included. It was kind of, but not that much. But I really wanted to try UFC, EA Sports UFC, the first one back in 2014, 15, I think so, around that, that time period. So I got myself a PlayStation 4, got myself an HD TV for the first time, at least a big one, a bigger one for the first time. And I started playing UFC EA Sports, but that was a good game. So that's how I made my transition to Xbox 360, to PlayStation 4, in case you were wondering. But that being said, uh, I did like my Xbox 360. It did bring me to a lot of good games, and I, I did enjoy itself, and I did like the transition to the PlayStation 4, and all the way to today's games. Now, what do I play? Still FIFA. Of course, most of my time, FIFA, EA Sports. I do still like to play Project Cars from time to time. I do play Steep. Uh, I play GTA V still. So that's kind of like my my, my wheelhouse of what I'm playing now. But getting ready for this show, I've been playing for a week or so Fight Night Champion. I've been also playing some Masters getting ready for this show. I've been dabbing into the old games also. Uh, driving games, project cars. I've been looking into uh, having more steep uh, tracks. I'm trying to redo the Olympics because it's kind of fun. And I've played 2010 Vancouver, London 2012 Olympic Games, the last Olympic Games ever made so far for consoles up until today, like real ones. Never mind Sonic and the freaking Olympic Games. The fucking Olympic Games. That was a terrible game for the Wii. I'm not happy. Those are not good. Those are not real games, but here we're talking about real, real Olympic games. And I'm still playing to this day. 
when I when I get a kick to be like, okay, Summer Olympics, all right, let's get ready. I just finished recording the Five Rings podcast. I'm in a little Olympic mood, so <laughs> I do put on London 2012, do a little cycling race, Kieran race on the track, and usually I win, and usually I'm like, all right, all right, I'm good. Put the Xbox away. I'm good for a little while. But speaking of... Xbox 360, here's a review of the day for today. What do you hit me with? <laughs> He's in. <laughs> Here's a penitentiary, son. That rip ain't gonna do shit but count somebody out, which means you got to knock that cracker on his ass. And you got one round. Knock the fucker on his ass. <laughs> Cross ring walk is one of those ring walks where you realize how attentive this fighter is. This is a guy who has his eye on the prize and nothing will distract him. Fight Night Champion, one of the best games ever. EA Sports developer, EA Canada, and HB Studios for the iOS version. EA Canada out of Vancouver. Team that is well known from evolving out of this boxing from Knockout Kings all the way to Fight Night 1, 2, 3, 4, Fight Night Champions. A long mainstay in the boxing video game world. EA Canada in Vancouver. They are, of course, uh, the, very well known in the sports video game world, playing, uh, working with FIFA. I think it's still to this day one of EA's biggest studio. EA Sports in Vancouver. Hello to everyone working at the EA Sports Vancouver Studios, if you're listening. Uh, a very important studio. We'll talk about them often when we talk about sports video games, but one of their masterpieces came out March 1st, 2011 in North America, in Europe, March 4th, 2011. Fight Night, the series. Fight Night Champion, the last of the series, but the crown jewel. The best of the best. Isaac Frost might be the best freaking villain in a video game ever. My God, I've never been this challenged. To this day, I've never fucking beat the Isaac Frost, man. So hard, I'm still trying to this day. Every week, I just, I just pop it back in. Just try, just try. My God, even amateur, it's so hard. Isaac Frost, what a challenge. And it's part of the mythology of this video game. It's part of the legend of this video game is Isaac Frost. The amount of people who've wasted days and weeks, I'm saying days, it's months trying to fucking beat Isaac Frost from sun up to sundown after work coming home trying to beat Isaac Frost. Finally making past the two rounds. All right, trying to go to the body. Oh my God. How many times have you wasted and restarted and got up the floor after being knocked down three times in a round? Round number one. Yeah, that's the type of game. And we'll get back to the champion mode storyline, which is a revolutionary in 2011 that started a whole genre to itself, at least a whole mode and inspired a whole bunch of new features in different iteration of EA Sports video games in the future. And EA Sports Fight Night Champion is one of the influential games of our time, I think, in the sports video game world. It was once again developed by EA Canada, published by Electronic Arts, Fight Night series, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360. What actually helped the longevity of this game is the fact that it's being still played to this day online, not only through Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 capabilities if you still have them, but also through the back playing, backward playing capabilities that a PlayStation 4 have for PlayStation 3 games and that a play Xbox One has for Xbox 360 game, especially on Xbox Live or PlayStation Network. So, you do have a very big community to this day 
in the thousands of players playing, the online community is still existing for Fight Night Champion. And that's uh, uh, another great story unto itself. It included the full spectrum punch control, where for the first time you had a combat game that with the right joystick, you can uh, kind of like instinctively use it to punch. Uh, of course, trying to do hooks by doing a motion right and a, and a half circle and, and forward for a jab and do a little angle and a bigger loop for an uppercut. So introduction of a new way to use a joystick for a more realistic feel to play in this boxing video game. Boxing video games over the years have always been used, or at least it was a testing grounds for a new technique of how to control a user control character. So if we go back to the arcade days and uh, the punch out game video game that was in arcades also had it kind of like a, a joystick feel, but you can all go forward or left or right, kind of like putting yourself into a boxing glove type of situation back in the arcades. I remember I spent a lot of times in the late 90s in the arcades of Niagara Falls on Dazzle Land, if, if that rings any bell. Dazzle Land, and especially the Skyline Tower, I've been playing these arcades. Uh, arcades, sports, video game arcades are, are what I've been playing my whole life. So so this show it doesn't exist for anything. So I remember the amount of time I spent playing boxing video game and trying to knock people out with a joystick. So it reminded me a bit, a bit of that when I started playing Fight Night Champion back in 2011. But it's a game that I'm really happy I kept to this day. One of the games that are the masterpiece. It, it was... Late enough into the existence of Xbox 360 and that generation of console that it used all the capabilities graphically of the console and the possibility and the power of it, but not late too late that it didn't pay attention to Xbox 360 and it was all focused on the other one. It was pretty much in the heyday, in the prime of Xbox 360. And also the PS3 era. Perfect timing, perfect storm, the perfect team that was known to work together, the perfect crew of fighter, roster of fighters also. One thing that is really interesting here is this was the last unlicensed video game. What I mean by unlicensed video game uh, by EA Sports, by the way, is the last time where EA Sports individually contracted likeness of different Boxers here, all all individuals. So that's why sometimes in in Fight Night One Round One versus uh, Fight Night Champion versus Fight Night Round Two, Three, or Four, the roster of boxers evolve, goes in, goes out. You have big boxers coming in, big boxers coming out. Muhammad Ali famously in Round Four, and now in this champion here, it's a bit different. So that change of boxing roster is due to individual contracts signed for, for the likeliness by either the agent of the boxers, the boxers themselves, or the different agencies or the different boxing agencies or council that exist in the boxing world. We know that in the boxing world, there's like three, four big ones, depending, the WBC, the WBL, WBA, IBF. So depending of all the championships and all that, by the way, that's that's where I'll finish the show is where I would want to have... What I will love for the ultimate boxing, maybe video game to be, will be my uh, finishing thought here on on sports as in the game. What I would like to see come back in a 2020 version of a Fight Night Champion. That will be my uh, my final thought. But it was a perfect game at the perfect time for the perfect power of the console of PS3, Xbox 360. When you play it to this day, it's still looks great it still sounds great it plays great it has aged very well of course it's not as crisp as a ps4 experience but who knows well, we're not here to to judge we like to play different things sometimes i'll review mobile games because some mobile sports games are really fun and different type of games like football manager and stuff so so the presentation i was really interested in talking about the last unlicensed game it was a challenge and it was very expensive to do so because you had to go individual roster. So that's why we don't have like 300 like uh, different 
fighters like you can have later on in UFC because all the fighters are licensed to UFC and UFC licenses all the fighter at once. You don't have to negotiate single likeness per boxer, which there's a cost to it. But this was EA Sports' last unlicensed game, so that's a good trivia fact to know. Three modes that are the most popular in this game, of course, the champion mode, which is the story mode, which was revolutionary, led to 2K, a rival company, really using this in their NBA aspect with NBA 2K, and we've seen FIFA go back to it. We've seen, of course, also other EA Sports entities go back to it over the last few years, if we're looking at different entities of sports that EA Sports have, Finite Champion had that RPG type of element, but just the right element, more of a movie element, I guess, so they're, they're kind of bringing a storyline to the actual game, and we'll get to the storyline, to the actors in a minute, and it's, a, it's worthwhile, and we'll get to it, we'll explain the plot, we'll talk about the characters, it's worthwhile, I guess we can... Spoiler alert, we're going to do spoilers, okay? It's been nine years. It's been nine years now, almost to the day. So I think it's okay if I spoil the game a bit. We'll go through the plot, and we'll read the plot out of the script here with the characters and the actors and all. So that's one thing, that mode. There's a legacy mode, which is basically the career mode. So you can create a boxer or you use a boxer that already exists from the zeros. You start in an amateur tournament, and then you start your pro career. And you can evolve. You start in your dingy gym and you practice. You get bigger or stronger. And you can simulate or you can just do it. Of course, you, when you do athletic training, it simulates. When you do, uh, I would say, skills training, it's called. It is actually you doing them. So it is more time consuming, but it is a bit more rewarding in the growth of the characteristic and the attributes of your boxer. So there's an RPG aspect to it. It's not just fighting. It is managing your weekly training, not forgetting to rest the week before. Of course, we all forgot the beginning of our uh, fight night champion. Oh, yeah, I forgot to rest. And you go into a fight and you get punched the first time and you're knocked out because you don't have any stamina. And you're like, oh yeah, I gotta rest. Okay, let's remember. The last week before a fight, I gotta fucking rest. Yes, you do. You gotta rest. And that is something that is uh, worth remembering if you play. Of course, the legacy mode or the career mode of Fight Night. Of course, there's a Fight Now also type of mode where you just choose a fighter, choose a ring, and you fight. This could be fun for a party game, party situation. It's the best mode for that. I love the the career mode for the long term. And of course, the champion mode is fun. It's kind of like a five hours of gameplay for the movie part all the way to the Isaac Frost fight. And then it depends how long it takes you to beat the fucker. I still haven't. And it's nine years. Nine years to the day. It's not like I played every year. There's been like... Like five years, I think. I was looking at my my save games uh, on my my memory card. I still have like a big, big memory card. For some reason, like a month before I bought my PS4 and I bought all my games for my PS4. For some reason, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna buy Battlefield 4. I'm like, I'm not a big fan of war games, but I'm gonna get Battlefield 4. And it's a big game. It needs a lot. Back then, like, we're not talking about like 500 gigs of data. A memory, a storage. I mean, on uh, on the console, right? It's a lot less than that on the Xbox that I had. So I bought an external memory, and I put it. I think I spent like three hundred bucks on the memory on Battlefield Four and everything. I'm like, yeah, I think I played three times. So I might play Battlefield Four just to make sure that I I still feel like I got my money's worth. But anyway, so <laughs> I buy Battlefield Four, and a month later, I get on my PlayStation thing and I haven't played thing, but I was looking at my storage my different storage unit for my Xbox 360 and so my save games for Fight Night were 2011, 2012, 2013 2014 pretty consistently so I guess it's not like I remember but I was trying to beat Isaac Frost like all these years 
And I was living, of course, in Montreal since 2010. Stayed a couple of years in Toronto, and before that, I born and raised in Montreal also. But so since 2011, I've been trying to beat Isaac Frost. Wasn't able to. And then uh, from 2014 to 2017, no save games. So I guess I didn't play for three years. And in 2017, when McGregor was going to fight Mayweather, I really got into boxing again for like a few months. So I created like another career with Conor McGregor. <laughs> Don't judge me. Why are you judging me right now? I feel you looking at your phone judging me. But anyways, I had created a career with Conor McGregor. Oh, I'm boxing, and that was kind of kind of like funny. Uh, but that was one of the things that I thought was fun to look at. And then 2020 is the latest save career. One other aspect that is fun of this game is, of course, online. Playing online to this day. You can be online world champion. That is awesome that to this day... The servers are working. You can play online. You can fight online. If you have PlayStation Network, PS Plus, and if you have Xbox Live, or PSN or Xbox Live, you can still fight online, which is amazing. You can still, to this day, challenge to become a world champion, spend time creating your, your fight or winning the championship, defending your title six times a day, which is exhausting. It's awesome, like to this day, and there's champions that have been champions for a freaking long time, and there's a lot of great stories. I wish like, I, I, I had the champion online right now to talk to him. No, I don't, but I wish I did, because great storylines there to this day, nine years after. When, name me a game that is not World of Warcraft or something like that. The nine, name me a sports video game that nine years after still has an online component that is active, and not only active by five persons around the world, I'm talking about thousands of people. On any given day, you'll find between 1,500 to 2,000 people on either the Xbox 360 or the PSN side of Fight Night Champion, which I think is an amazing feat, an amazing accomplishment for EA Sports, and the fact that they realize the importance of this and they hadn't shut down that game is another great aspect so here's a, a couple of excerpts from uh the a page description here from a finite champion before we get into the plot of the actual video game although it is not completely different experience from the rest of the game champion mode bears many exclusive modifications to make the story mode compelling in most of the fights, players are required to fight in a particular manner or create a certain outcome to be victorious. For example, players may have to be smart against a certain opponent who has a particular strategy. One example of this is an opponent who targets the body. The player is required to stay on the outside and avoid body punches. Another scenario puts a player against slim odds in which Bishop suffers a hand injury and must avoid using certain punches to avoid permanent damage. The fights are generally meant to be won by knockout, although it is possible to win by decision. And that's another great, amazing part of this is every different reaction creates a different, different situation. And the cutscenes and are a bit different for everything, and the, your goals will change. It's not going to be the same if you do a different playthrough. If you do it two, three times and different outcomes, it will be different. Champion mode plays out in the movie style, taking approximately five hours. Cinematic cutscenes control the flow of the story, and the actual gameplay takes place during fights. Occasionally, cutscenes can be seen in between rounds. Here's the plot now of Fight Night champion spoilers alert spoiler alert nine years in the making spoiler alert spoiler alert spoiler alert here we go again andre bishop is a boxing boxer serving time in a correctional facility after winning a jailhouse boxing match against another inmate he is cornered and brutally beaten by other prisoners including his opponent severely injuring him the story then flashes back four years to his rise as a professional fighter. Bishop's career begins as a middleweight when he is de when he defeats nine-time amateur champion Joel Savon, earning him significant recognition as a contender. After a few successful bouts, Andre and trainer Gus Carisi, which in my mind really reminds me of Gus D'Amato, the coach and, and trainer of Mike Tyson in real life, but he doesn't look like him. He actually looks a bit like Mickey. 
in uh, if you take the toque away for a beret, it looks a bit like Mickey. So imagine Mickey as the attitude, custom auto and the name and the way it's called. It's kind of like the inspiration for Gus Carisi here, trainer of Andre Bishop. So Andre and trainer Gus Carisi are approached by D.L. McQueen. If you know when someone's called McQueen, they're shady. A crooked but famous promoter who wants to promote Andre under the management of his daughter, Megan. The two refuses, renewing the long-time rivalry between Carisi and McQueen. Of course, the manager, the trainer, and the promoter don't get along. Of course, classic custom auto, Don King. Classic story. After continually failing to sway Andre in an attempt to fix a contender fight falls through. McQueen frames him of police assault with the help of two crooked cops. You know, it's a great video game when you have crooked cops involved. Sentencing Bishop to over five years in prison. After recovering from his injuries, Andre begins to train himself and keep fit while imprisoned. Andre's brother Raymond is rising up the ranks as a heavyweight, but Andre is angered to discover that he has signed with McQueen Promotions. After Andre is released, Raymond organizes him a job as an assistant trainer. And after Andre beats two ranked heavyweights during regular sparring sessions, Megan, who has split from her father's business over philosophical differences convinces him to make an unexpected comeback as a heavyweight and becomes his manager with Gus returning as Andre's trainer. Following several successful heavyweight bouts Andre becomes a contender to the undefeated world heavyweight champion Isaac fucking Frost, a boxer under McQueen Promotions who has won every fight in his career by knockout. Jealous of his brother's return and bitter about being overshadowed, Raymond challenges Andre to a title eliminator bout. With the winner securing a fight against Frost, Raymond knocks Andre out in the second round after Andre voluntarily stays down from a knockdown. Raymond then fights Frost but is defeated by a first round knockout and hospitalized, angered, Andre challenges Frost himself. Megan covertly records, records one of McQueen's crooked cops mentioning the framed attack on Andre. Forcing McQueen to agree to the bout, adopting a defensive strategy, Andre knocks Frost out and becomes the world heavyweight champion. McQueen is subsequently that subsequently arrested when the framing of Andre is revealed. That's the story of Fight Night Champion. Great story and the fact that you can play through different types. You actually box in prison with no gloves. That's really cool. And then you box later on. You box in the sparring session that you mentioned. You have to actually box your brother. And then you box fucking Isaac Frost. One of the most frustrating experience in video games in my entire life to this day. Is to fucking beat Isaac Frost. I cannot do it. I can't do it. I really can't do it yet. I've been trying. Every single year. I'm telling myself. It's the year I'm going to beat fucking Isaac Frost. And I can't get past the two damn rounds. Once I think I got past the two damn rounds. And uh, I got a ring, red ring of death. And I lost it. It's saved been saved for years. As just the fight to Isaac Frost. Starting it. Two rounds. Survive the two rounds. Just survive the fucking two rounds. I know what I need to do. Like my strategy lately has been to, yes, stay out of his stay out of his way. Circle around him. Not trying to run too much, but just circle the bed. When he comes in, I cover. I cower. I try to sidestep. And then I clinch. And then when I unclinch, I protect, sidestep out, run a bit over. I can get past one round. But I always get clumped once or twice. Get knocked down once or twice. And then I get knocked down a third time and I can't get up. And I'm done. And Isaac Frost won. Always the same damn thing. And I know every one of you out there listening to this right now. You have a frustrating experience fighting Isaac Frost. And the fact that this fucking monster at the end of this game is so hard to beat is the beauty of Fight Night Champion. 
You can make your career. You can make it easy. You can do whatever you want. But even on amateur, beating Isaac Frost is an experience. It's almost, I would say, yeah, coming of age moment. Trying to beat Isaac Frost is a coming of age moment for a gamer and for a sports video gamer. It's so hard. What is your your Isaac Frost experience? I want to know. Please write me at, at sportspodcastingnetwork at gmail.com. What is your experience with Isaac Frost or on Twitter at Kev Laramie? Trying to beat the fuck? Whew. Countless sleepless nights trying to beat Isaac Frost. I know I have. And I know multiple of you have also. Here are the characters for this great, great <clears throat> uh, mode in Fight Night Champion. Andre Bishop, the main protagonist of the game. Andre begins his professional career as a talented prospect. However, his dreams of following in his father's footsteps are taking a shot at the world title is soon ruined after he is framed by two crooked cops but makes a comeback winning the heavyweight belt. He is voiced and modeled after LaMonica Garrett. D.L. McQueen, the head of McQueen Promotions and a famous fight promoter. McQueen is known for his hot temper and short-lived partnerships with professional fighters. He has been long despised by Gus Carisi, Andre's trainer, for his notoriety. He is acted computer captured by Randy McCormick of Maple Ridge, British Columbia, and voiced by Walter Addison. Gus Carisi, Andre's loyal trainer and manager, Gus had previously trained Andre's father, who was also a talented fighter. He looked, took both Andre and Raymond in after their parents died and raised them an experienced trainer who writes this stuff. That's amazing. I'm crying just reading that this thing. Gus understands the true brutality of boxing and the hard work required to overcome it. He is voiced by Ralph P. Martin. Raymond Bishop, Andre's younger brother. Raymond pursues a professional career in boxing as a heavyweight. Raymond upsets Andre when he decides to leave Gus and sign with McQueen Promotions. Once Andre reemerges as a heavyweight fighter, Raymond becomes jealous and challenges him to a fight. After an upset over his brother, he is knocked out by Isaac Frost. He is voiced by Dewan Owens. Megan McQueen, the daughter of D.L. McQueen, Megan starts off as a manager of her father's company, but leaves due to philosophical differences. She then becomes a solo manager, even managing Andre herself. She is the likeness of actress Pauline Egan and voiced by Eliza Dushku. Yeah, yeah. The replacement, at least the slayer after Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Eliza Dushku herself. Yeah, yeah. You got that reference. You know you do. You know you did. Eliza Dushku. Awesome. Isaac Frost, a heavyweight fighter who wins the title two years after beginning his professional career. He defends his title numerous times and brutally knocks out Raymond Bishop. Andre Bishop's younger brother. This spurs Andre to challenge Frost himself. He is an amateur boxing gold medalist and has a pro boxing record of 33-1 and one following his defeat to Andre Bishop. His character is and physique is inspired by Ivan Drago from the Rocky IV movie, but his looks are based on world wrestling entertainment wrestler Randy Orton. He is voiced by Travis Willingham. And then we have the police officers. It doesn't really matter. There's uh, about uh, 21 different venues in this here. The Manila Arena, Aragon Ballroom, classic of round uh, Fight Night Round 1. You have a New York Arena, which is basically Madison Square Garden, but they don't have the right for me for Madison Square Garden. You have the Stable Center. Uh, what else do you have also in there? There's a few on Mexico. There's a couple other great ones. There's MGM Grand in LA. So you have a Cowboy Stadium also. In the top large arenas uh, and the boxing gyms also different here and there for 21 total venues. This game has been received very well. Metacritic was one of my favorite critic websites for video games out there. Gave it an 86. I agree. I would even say it deserves higher 
than 86. It is, in my mind, the best boxing video game ever made. One of the best sports video games ever made. All the scores here, aggregate scores of 86.5 by game rankings. Metacritic 86, like we said, but... 90%, 90%, 70, uh, I've seen 95%, I've seen A+, plus, depending on the publication. It was a very well-received game in 2011. A masterpiece in the world of sports video game. The best boxing video game, I think, in my entire life that I've played. And I've played a lot. The thing is... My generation, I'm 35 years old as we're talking right now. We've seen a lot of sports. I've seen a lot of boxing video games. From Mike Tyson punch out on my freaking Nintendo. All the way to today. From all the knockout kings on PS1, PS2. To the the days of Thunder or Afro Thunder. I don't remember what the freaking that was called on the Dreamcast. To all the other boxing games that I've seen over the years. I've played a fair share of boxing games. The best one. Of them all, for me, is Fight Night Champion. EA Sports Fight Night Champion coming out in 2011. On that note, I hope you enjoyed the reboot of Sports and the Game. We'll be back next week to review Masters 2012. Tiger Wood, PGA Tour, but a special edition. Focus on the Masters. And because the Masters is postponed because of the fucking coronavirus, next week... We're going to talk about that game and review it. And we'll give you some news in the sports video game world. We'll talk also about some other great happening in the world of sports video games and what I would like to do. But before I say goodbye, I promise to you that I am going to give you my final thought on what is the best boxing video game that I would like to be done now. And how you do it is easy. It's really easy. You build it based off of Fight Night Champion. Like, not the actual coding and stuff. That's hard. But, but like, the gameplay, the story mode. I'm not sure if you do a story mode. If you do one, make it a bit different. But you base it off of it. Don't make it longer. Or you can. But don't make it shorter. Like, make it deep still. Make it worth something. Not, like, the first edition of the Journey of FIFA, which was done in, like, an hour. So, make it a little bit deeper. But what I would make sure to include, and that is difficult, and that's one of the reasons why we might never see that happen and never see it happen in the game too, is to have the different belts. Like, I want to see the WBC, the WBA, the WBO, and the IBF. I want to see the North American ones too, in the different weight class. And I want to be able to go from weight class to weight class. I want to be able to, to, to pull a Canelo, or to be a Manny Pacquiao, and win... Multiple classes. Floyd Mayweather. Go 50-0, and 51-0, and be undefeated, even beat a freaking Japanese in his territory if I want to. Why not? I want to be able to recreate that from different weight class, different organization. I want to be able to challenge different weight class, different organization. Those are not necessarily easy things. But if FIFA can freaking make a game now that you can change your patches from league to league when you get promoted... I think you can create a boxing video game where you have the different organization. And that's where the only solution to have the best video game ever made to exist is to do it as follows. You cannot have real likeness of boxers. And it's unfortunate because you'll only have the best game ever made if you have the likeness of boxers. But having the likeness or or the real... Okay, so maybe you have the likeness. Fine, get the likeness of boxers. But you won't get the real rights for the real organizations. But you can create fake organizations. So just create multiple organizations or multiple weight classes, more than just three, four, five. Make it regular to real life. And that would create maybe the best boxing ever, game ever. Where you have your gym. You cre- maybe that's another one. Instead of just creating a career for one boxer, you can create the, bar, the career for a fighter, a, a, a gym, where you create a few fighters, and your gym becomes known. You become Kronk Gym, or, or maybe you have these gym included. You have the, the Wild Card Gym and the, the Kronk Gym. And you have, so there's a lot of things that we've seen in other games over the years, included in, in some in UFC, when you have a different type of games, and other combat sports over the year. I think if you do a little mashup, of what I'm just telling you now. Maybe you'll create a boxing game that is better 
than EA Sports 5 Night Champion. But that's the only way you'll create a game better than EA Sports 5 Night Champion. Final thought. On that note, follow me on social media at Kev Laramie. And until then, as always, Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm-mm. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks. Don't mind me. I'ma just grab my stuff and leave. Excuse me, please. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No. Fuck this shit, I'm out. All right then. I don't know what the fuck just happened, but I don't really care. I'ma get the fuck up out of here. Fuck this shit, I'm out.